Hey everybody, welcome back to the VIP Financial Education YouTube channel. We recently dropped a video showing the single most asked financially related question on Google through all of 2023. Very interesting and probably not all that surprising in some ways too. What we discovered in that video is that the average individual, one person, is going to negatively cash flow $272.18 per month. That's on average. Now, if you're negatively cash flowing over $250 per month or $3,000 per year, you're going to continue to find yourself in this cycle of debt. Almost all of it is gonna end up being bad debt because if it were good debt, you wouldn't have negative cash flow. So what we wanna do today is actually go through the cash flow cruncher that I completed during that video. I'll link that video in the description for you so you can make it easy to find. And you can also download your own free copy of the cash flow cruncher budgeting tool. We provide it as a token of appreciation here for our audience. We love you guys. You've been with us for a long time. So we give this to you so that you can use it with any other tools you're using to make sure that you're keeping a very, very close tab on your money. It's easy to fill out. It's an Excel spreadsheet, super user-friendly. Go ahead and download yours at cashflowcruncher.com if you'd like one. So we're gonna go through that spreadsheet here in detail today, and I just kinda wanna pick it apart on the spot here and see whether or not there are some ideas that we can come up with. And I'm gonna ask for your help on this. If you see anything that you think I'd missed, please leave it in the comments section below. There's absolutely no such thing as picture perfect when it comes to money. There's too many ways to skin the cat. Usually I find that it's not about right and wrong, it's about better and worse. You have choices and there are gonna be consequences to your choices. Making sure that you're focusing on the long term and you're planning for the future is critical. And making sure that you're staying consistent to a plan that will favor your future is critical. If you're going to instantly gratify yourself over and over again when you don't have the ability to afford it, we're not gonna be on the same page. Now, what we will be on the same page about is I'm a huge advocate for lifestyle enjoyment. I want you to have the lifestyle that you've dreamed of, but math has to work. And that's the beauty of working in finance versus maybe spiritual health or physical health or mental health. It's oftentimes a little harder to measure. Sometimes they're not more healthy just because they've lost weight. So we wanna make sure that we're looking at things through a microscope that is very math based and the math will generally create a storyline for you. Let's go ahead and see if we can try and create a storyline through this cash flow cruncher. Now, if you didn't join us for that other cash flow cruncher analysis and where we went through each and every average, you'll notice here that we have several pages on this spreadsheet once you download it. There's a summary tab which actually imports all of the data from the other tabs onto a page where you can see in black and white exactly where you stand. So this is a good place to start when you first complete a cash flow cruncher. You look at the total average income for a at one individual in the United States being $6,932 take home per month now. Mortgage uh, payments are now just north of $2,000, not including taxes, insurance, and HOA fees. Credit card minimums, other consumer related debt minimum payment obligations, a personal expense category totaling $4,423 for all other monthly costs that come through. And when you're filling this out, it's very important to use conservatively realistic averages over the last, say, six months to a year. If uh, things are trending differently, sometimes we shorten up that length of, of data that we're, that we're averaging. When things are relatively consistent from one year to the next, a lot of times we are uh, going to be taking maybe a one-year or two-year average to determine what we can expect for the future. So what this gives us is a pretty good idea of what's happening today and what we can project will happen in the future if no changes are made. You can see the additional tabs here at the bottom of the page. If you're using Excel spreadsheet on numbers, usually they're gonna be at the top of the spreadsheet. So you'll complete your average revenue and assets. You can see the average American, according to the statistics that we pulled up for the first video, is spending $2,800, or I'm sorry, is, is currently uh, seeing about a $2,800 checking balance and a $1,200 savings account balance. When we flip over to the debts page, the average mortgage, according to Quicken, is $310,000 nationally. The mortgage payment, again, is noted here in this field. You can see the auto loan average of 24,000 with a minimum payment of 528, which is the average for a used vehicle as of now. That's an average interest rate of five and three quarters. 
We've got several credit cards here, totaling $7,951. And what I really love about this cash flow cruncher that you'll find useful is over here in these columns, it's gonna give you a little bit of data I've never found in anybody else's tools. I like other tools as well. I just use them in conjunction with this. The thing I don't like about this cash flow cruncher is you've gotta keep it manually completed. And I do that constantly. I'm in multiple times a week. In fact, if you look at my dashboard here, you can see that I have several cash flow crunchers open as of right now, just for my sewer company. So as we get into uh, these, these extra special fields, you can see that there's something called a target rate and something called a loan to value. The target rate is the minimum monthly payment, in this case, $2,044 for this mortgage, divided by the balance owed, which would be $310,000 in this equation. And that means that point 659% of the outstanding balance is what's paid on a monthly basis. As we scroll down, we can gauge how these target rates vary and none of them exceed 3%. Certainly there are some that are over the others. Uh, right now we see the local bank here of $951 with a $26.15 minimum payment obligation is costing the most cash flow, even though it may or may not be the highest interest rate. Also, again, in this case, it is the interest rate that's highest. So that tells us a story as well. We're looking at three different factors when we're trying to attack and pay off debt. And boy, oh boy, do we need to focus on the debt. Because if we don't, we are going to run into a crisis eventually. It's just a matter of time. And with only a few thousand dollars in the bank, $272 negative cash flow on average each month doesn't leave a lot of breathing room for this person uh, to avoid danger. We've got to make sure we deal with this quickly. The gross cash flow position on this summary tab will tell us how much net cash flow is left over at the end of each month on average after all of the debts are paid in full. At that point, we're only left with the personal expenses, which are categorized here on its own special tab. You can plainly see that each category has been itemized. We went over this in the first video. All of these are the best averages we could find according to the 2023 statistics. So this is pretty realistic. You have to be above average to be beating this situation. And I hope most of you guys are. In fact, I've seen on our channel that the typical audience member here is usually a little more fiscally responsible. You're a little more advanced in your uh, adult life and you have, if experienced them in the past, overcome a lot of the challenges, like myself. I went through a lot of challenges financially early on in my 20s, even through some of my mid 20s, because I was ambitious and I was spending a lot of money to grow businesses and taking a lot of chances as you should in your 20s. So in this particular situation, we've got to make some corrections very, very fast. We've got to become above average and you do too. And so your situation might be better than this, it might be worse than this. Just try to find some things that are relatable to you, see how the cash flow cruncher is used and understand that regardless of how well or poorly you might be doing, generally speaking, there are going to be strategies you can take to continue to improve. No matter how well you're doing, there are strategies. No matter how far you've fallen behind or how poorly you think you've done or how you know what your current age is, it's never too late to get things going and stay consistent with it. So when we jump over to the personal expenses tab, I want to kind of take note of where all this spending is going, right? We've got a lot of money going out, $4,423 every single month off of an income stream of only $6,932 take home. So this is gobbling up the vast majority of the income that's hitting the bank. And as we go through each of these utilities, I'm looking for things that we might be able to consider unnecessary, right? Maybe unnecessary lifestyle spending. And I hate to break it to you, but if you're in a negatively cash flowing situation, you do not have the luxury of spending on things that you don't need. You have to earn that. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Today, I'm gonna to go through a very organic approach and we're gonna talk about some of the potential timelines that it could take for somebody in a similar situation to get ahead again. And then I'll do another video where I go a little bit more extravagant where I'll show you what I personally would do as somebody that would, would take this as seriously as I possibly can. So make sure you're a subscriber to the channel if you aren't, aren't one already. I'm gonna be dropping those videos, so turn on those bell notifications. So on this, I see some things popping out at me relatively quickly, right? 
First and foremost, we know that on the debts page, we've got a mortgage that's costing us over two grand a month. And in addition to that, it's costing us $415 in taxes. We've got $231 in homeowner's insurance and another couple hundred bucks in average HOA dues nationally. That's a big portion and usually would exceed what I would recommend anybody spend on their housing costs when they're only earning 6,900. It's all about percentages, right? So you're gonna be looking at wanting to keep that number below a third, which it definitely is over, especially when you add the utility costs in. We see that auto costs are pretty reasonable. I would assume $50 in tolls and parking, we would need to find out how avoidable that is. But when we jump over to the living and other expenses side, there's definitely areas where adjustments can be made. Yes, this person is gonna to have to give up some of the luxury items that might be falling into this spending money category. Sorry, hate to break it to you. There's not a financial uh, consultant on the planet that would advise you otherwise, unless they're terribly irresponsible. We've got eating out $166 each month. We've got extremely expensive pet care on average through this country right now each month. We also have $120 worth of gifts that are being purchased each and every month for well over $1,000 annually. So that also should be reevaluated if you're serious about correcting an imminent threat to your future. So I'm looking at all of those. So let's kind of go through the hypotheticals of what I would suggest to somebody if they were in this situation. And right away, I'm gonna say, you've got to buckle down. You cannot afford to go out and enjoy random discretionary spending money to enhance lifestyle. You've got to find things that you enjoy that cost a lot less, if, not, if anything at all, that are either at your home or nearby or go outdoors, enjoy nature, do things that uh, can be extremely fun without feeling the need to go out and spend money, which also goes to eating out. Now, eating out compensates for some of the, uh, you know, meals that you're gonna eat throughout the month, but $166 really doesn't get you far anymore, does it? So if you're eating by yourself and you're not treating anyone else, a special person in your life to a meal, it's, you know, I would say $50 per visit, especially if you have a drink or two, is, is totally realistic. So maybe three meals at that rate would be conservative. And I like to operate with conservative and realistic numbers. So conservatively realistic is what we're shooting for. Let's say three meals at the grocery store bumps this to $450 instead. And pet care, I guess I would need to find out exactly what that includes. I'm a huge snob when it comes to taking care of my pets. I like the highest quality foods, but again, I can afford it. When I couldn't afford it, that's not what I bought. And if you have to buy premium of everything in order to own pets, um, you're probably not ready to have pets. And I would keep that in mind. I think far too often people adopt who shouldn't. So we've got gifts here. Guess what? I'm gonna to explain to my family and friends that I'm giving them the, the gift of my best future ever, which will allow me to give them much better gifts down the road. You keep this up, you'll never give a gift as long as you live. So I'm gonna be temporarily removing gifts from this equation. We've got donations, tithing, and charity. Again, I would guess I would wanna know where that's going. You can't squeeze blood from a turnip, right? You have to be able to uh, realize your own despair before you can take care. You know, put your own mask on before you help the person next to you here, folks. That's my personal opinion about it. You give back in other ways. Give back with your time. Give back with your energy. Give back to your community. And I mean, our, our, my sewer company, we give back to our community tons of ways. I was actually out volunteering several times this week, helping the community out uh, and doing it completely for free. And it you know, it was highly appreciated. It even got us a lot of great PR and recognition. So that was a little bonus, you know, it's not why we did it, but sometimes it can pay off even more so uh, in terms of, uh, you know, a lot of times people that are in this situation or because of religious beliefs, you're, you're somebody that might think giving leads to getting. I'm somebody that believes that way, but it's obviously not mathing out right now. So we've got to make sure that the numbers connect before we can start being ultra generous. Aside from that, what else am I seeing? I'm seeing house cleaning services for $160. Sorry, too bad, so sad. You get to enjoy that when you earned it. We've got water, cable, gas, electric. We've got cell phone, trash, internet. 
And we've got 30 in landscaping. Too bad, so sad. And 54 in subscriptions, which is, um, it, it is definitely in the crosshairs and may get axed. Same even with cable. If you're going to spend 54 on subscriptions, why do you need cable? If you're going to spend on cable, why would you pay for subscriptions? You can't afford to do both and spend $170 per month. You can't, not in this situation. Now, if you're going about it in this direction, we've done so far quite well. Let's go back to the cash flow summary page. Look at that. By just cutting all of those costs down, we've got $669.35, seemingly by magic. And your lifestyle really didn't change a lot. Yes, there's gonna require a little bit more chores and housekeeping. Yes, you might have to give up a few of those luxuries. Yes, you're not gonna see the inside of a restaurant, as Dave Ramsey likes to say, for some time. But it at least, at least is getting you in the right direction to where we can start to make some additional modifications down here on credit cards. By just making those cuts and without doing anything else fancy, you could take this $7,951 and divide that by the net cash flow position of $669 to determine approximately how many months it's going to take to pay all of those off in full. And we're under a year. So literally in under one year, these are completely eliminated as are these payments. Now there are more f finesseful, if that's a word, or uh, creative ways of getting rid of these balances that personally I would probably pursue because it's quick and easy for me. It doesn't take a lot of mental gymnastics. If you're not doing this as often as I am, sometimes simple is a lot more valuable. So keep things simple, which is what I'm trying to show you here. But for those of you that are a little more advanced that think that you can get it done quickly so your time is worth it, uh, considering things like transferring to 0% interest credit cards so that during that year you're able to avoid as much of that interest as possible. But given the amount that's there, uh, the savings is pretty nominal compared to where I would rather have you investing your time. I would prefer that you're investing your time into things that can earn you substantially more than what the time would save you in interest prevented by manipulating the budget the other suggestion that I think is important to discuss and note here is we've got a fairly tremendous amount of value in the property. We've got a $480,000 home, uh, which is an, a national average, and we divide that, uh, or if we were to, to multiply that times, say, 80%, we know that we could pursue a home equity line of credit uh, for up to 80% of your property's value. And if that total is $384,000, but we only owe $310,000, look, there's $74,000 of potential usability. This is money that is opportunity. To the average person, it's a danger. Be very, very careful. Only pursue things when you really feel confident in your ability to identify a, an opportunity that the reward is worth the risk and something that you're willing to follow all the way through with. So things that are a little more passive require a little more, a little less effort from you. Things that are a little more proactive are obviously going to require a lot of day-to-day -day, or some at least. So you've got to know what you're getting yourself into because the last thing you want to do is use money, especially debt, in order to pursue something that's going to fall on its face. So you want to be as careful as you can and avoid that as much as possible. So we've got $74,000 available here to us that we could have on a home equity line of credit. Now, a home equity line of credit is great because it only costs me in interest costs if I choose to use it. If I'm not choosing to use it, it's just sitting there waiting for that great golden opportunity. One opportunity that could have come up earlier than just paying these credit cards off over the course of a year is we could take $74,000, we could pay off those credit card balances of whatever it was, $7,900, and it could have been paid off you know, within 60 days because that's about how long it would take to get the HELOC. Somewhere between 30 to 60 is generally um, what you should expect. So you've got this HELOC, you can use it. If I were to pay off 7,900, my interest rate right now on my home equity line of credit, I believe is eight and a half percent. I'm not using any of my home equity line of credit at this particular moment in time, um, but I do have $250,000 available to me for opportunities and I've used it over and over and over again, paid it off over and over and over again. 
in order to build wealth. And it is one of the single greatest, most valuable tools I have ever had in my entire life. So in this particular situation and in yours as well, if you have equity in your home, you should strongly be considering what it takes to actually get qualified for a HELOC so that you have it on standby as long as you are absolutely 100% positive that you can use it with complete fiscal responsibility, period. No questions asked. Now I'll put the uh, debt weapon cheat sheet, a link to that in the uh, description for you as well. That'll help you understand which questions need to be answered in order to get uh, a tool like a HELOC. But I love this because now uh, we have this uh, you know, remaining uh, automobile debt of $24,000 um, and we have a home equity line of credit of 74. And there's something that we can think about here because a home equity line of credit charges interest. We could hypothetically pay that auto loan off with a lower interest rate using a higher interest rate HELOC in order to free up additional cash flow because the minimum payment obligation on a $24,000 loan is interest only at that 8.5%. So if we were to take 24,000, times 0.085, we're only paying $2,040 per year in interest, which is a total of $170 a month versus 528. So we could drive our cash flow position even higher by doing this. Alternatively, in order to pay the least amount of interest, we could obviously continue to take that net cash flow of 600, I'm sorry, it's now $878, which is fabulous because we got the minimum payments from the credit cards back, right? So if we were to take this 24,000, oh, let's do the math on this again, 528, that's principal and interest, okay? So really we need a, an auto loan amortization calendar calculator here to, to fa factor this out perfectly, but let's just do some real, real basic math. On this net cash flow position, if we've got a $24,000 balance, on the auto loan, and this is a year down the road, having made $528 payments the whole time, let's just make a casual and yet conservative assumption that at least 300 of that each month was going towards principal. We're looking at $3,600 in total at the end of the year as a reduction of this balance. So we're gonna reduce that by $3,600 because we're a year down the road having paid off those credit cards. We now have $20,400 remaining on that account. If we just divide that by the 878, along with what we've already assumed is, is uh, conservative, $300 in principle here. So if we were to just take this number plus 300, we could divide this by $1,178. And we know that 17 months later, the auto is now completely paid off. If it were me and knowing that there's value where I'm not upside down on this vehicle, I wouldn't even bother paying this off. I'd sell it and I would buy myself a very, very inexpensive car. That's what I would do. Um, I know that I have a home equity line of credit at this point that if I were to sell this vehicle and I didn't make much, if any profit, and I wanted to convert this into say a $10,000 really reliable vehicle that just looks decent, in fact, one of my best friends, Bricks, check him out, Bricks Fitness. On YouTube here, he bought a vehicle for his daughter recently and spent under five grand on it. Looks really, really good. Has actually a reasonable amount of miles. Should run for 300, 400 plus. So um, I think that there is a lot of opportunity here to prevent 14 grand worth of debt by just selling and downgrading the car. That's what I would personally do. Again, I'm, I'm talking things that are a little bit more digestible for a common audience member, but I would be looking at doing absolutely anything necessary. I have a acronym, WIT, right? Whatever it takes, folks. Until you're in a position to afford this, you shouldn't have taken the debt out in the first place. And this is where most people are. These are averages. Most people have auto loan debts. Almost everyone I speak with has one. I do not. So right now we can see that this would be paid off in another 17 months. That's in addition to the 12 months to pay off the credit card. So two and a half years later, completely non-mortgage debt free. That means this payment is also gone and the new net cash flow position is $1,406. This gives the opportunity to start stashing capital, okay? You have access to a home equity line of credit for $74,000 already. That can also act as an emergency fund. I know most financial uh, influencers, gurus, whatever you wanna call them, 
talk about an emergency fund. I use it and talk about it a little bit differently. Frankly, I wouldn't even have much more than, if even this much, money sitting in checking and savings. I would rather see, uh, in, in standard savings, I would rather see this 1,406 start stockpiling into a high yield savings account until you've actually established enough of a slush fund there where you can begin dollar cost averaging into other investments. And I would be very careful not to put those investments into anything high risk until you've earned the right to do high risk. Again, choices equal consequences. So we wanna make sure that we're timing things the right way. Most people have it right. And I think their line of thinking is, is trying to point them in the right direction, but they're skipping steps. People get impatient. So I would start stockpiling this $1,406. Would I attack and eliminate this mortgage? With a 4.7% interest rate, it's gonna be a pretty difficult decision to do that. Because I already have access to a home equity line of credit, meaning I don't have to pay the house down further to get access to one, I would probably ride this out and start learning everything I could over the period of one or two years in order to figure out how I can easily beat a 4.7% uh, cost of interest by investing and generating profits that are better than that. And that margin I get to keep for myself. That would be my personal approach to this, which is exactly what I've done. The stuff I look at in terms of ROIs, I'm not even gonna bat an eye if it's not tens of a percentile per year on average as a minimum, and not, not on average, as a minimum. There are things I focus on that will have triple digit ROIs. There are things that will have thousand percent plus ROIs in a year. Now, most of the higher ROIs that I'm going to tell you you can expect to get, it's going to require effort. Building businesses is one example of that. Uh, it's a primary example of that. So you're going to have to be a participant and active in order to see those really, really high upside potentials. But can you do better than 4.7%? Absolutely. Now, in the next video, make sure you check it out because I'm going to go a completely different path with this, which is something I absolutely would do myself and would recommend to anybody, no matter how scary it might sound or disruptive to you as a person. I'm going to talk about actually telling this person to sell their home. So make sure you stay tuned, subscribe to the channel, drop a like if you like these kind of videos where we get into the nuts and bolts of the money and walk you through some of the tools that we provide you for free here on this channel. It does help us out a lot. And leave a comment below. What did I miss? What else would you guys do in this equation? What would you do if it were you as you walk through this situation in order to fix that negative cash flow position? We're now at 1,406 bucks a month, baby. And that's two and a half years, same earnings. So guys, show me what you would have done. Love you very much. Make it a great day and keep on cash flowing. Take care.